Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Today I'm focusing on PR stuff for my second book and doing the manuscript for my third book. The second book is actually going to be released in September, late September, and all of the artwork is finalized now. So it's going to print and that means that I can focus on the stuff that's going to surround the release, like wrapping paper, how I'm going to package the books and send them, Instagram stickers for stories and stuff. I'm really, really excited because I didn't really do that for Zoom. Nice low beanie. Yeah. No. <laughs> so with bandits we're releasing like a gift edition we did that for zoom and i really want to do that again so basically it's wrapped and like packaged so nicely it has like a bunch of stickers and stuff in it this is not the final because i had to actually change the color i accidentally did a three color design when it's a two color print oh my god the screen looks so f disgusting don't look my password so the paper is white so yellow is the first color and then the brown line work is the second color and i just wasn't thinking i added a red that's like varying transparencies as the third color but i'm only allowed two colors and i realized afterwards so i was like Eek. And I just converted all of the colors to the uh, very transparency brown. And I think it looks pretty nice, actually. It kind of looks very 70s, so I'm very happy. I'm actually even more happy with it than I was with this. I mean, you can't really see the difference. Dang, you can't see the difference that much on the screen. Hopefully you can. Now I'm just going to try and find the colors that I want. With my little Pantone, because no issue does Pantone printing. Sure, I'm going to try and find this now. And then I'll... Oh, I think I've found one already. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Under five seconds. I'm amazing. <laughs> and then... The brown, which I can see right here. Oh my gosh, I'm so fast. That's nice. We're making like 10 centimeter stickers. So I thought that it would be nice because it's, it's a circle to do like a cross section of an apple. So I'll show you where the circle is. Also, I'm using Adobe Fresco. It's the first time I'm really using it. And it's really actually great. It's going to replace Illustrator for me because I can create, I mean, I still have to do some stuff on Illustrator to finish it off, but they have vector brushes. These, all of these are vector brushes. So that means that they can be blown up to any size and it means all of my vector work can be done on my tablet, which is really, really great. But anyway, so this is the circle of the sticker and then the apple. It's like basically a cross section of the apple, which I think is so cute because apples feature prominently in the book. And then I also designed tape to seal the parcels. I'm thinking this is going to be on craft paper because I want to try and get brown envelopes to ship them in. So I think that would be really nice to have brown tape on a brown envelope. And then that's to wrap it, that's to seal it, and that's to seal the wrapping. And today Rocket is also building shelves. How exciting. So it's going to be like this, but over there. On fire, with you, crashing waves on the shore. holding the camera up right now oh, good times okay this is how i used to vlog and like do photos and stuff when i was living in that really crappy house i used to like sticky tape lots of mascara together and then stack a bunch of stuff and sticky tape my phone to them. <laughs> just buy a gorilla punch on it's only 30 dollars <laughs> baby do you think 10 centimeters for the sticker is too big should it be more like 7.5 I think 10 centimeters might be too bloody huge. This is eight. I think that's kind of cool. Like closing wrap. Where's my book? It's gonna be the same size as Zoom. This is the book size. And this, that's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 7.5, 7.5. That's what it's gonna look like. I'm very excited. Okay, but it's gonna be this big. <laughs>
fact that I was just working on my storyboards for book number three. I can't believe I'm already working on that just before the release of my second, but it makes sense. Um, but I just got an email from the people I'm doing the tissue paper with and they can't actually do any transparency with like the colors. Um, they suggested having no, nothing, which would look something like this, but it's too plain for me. So I'm going to try and use lines so that this is all 100%, but looks like less. Oh, I really don't want it to be. <laughs> really would love the transparency. This is just too plain, but I'm going to try and fix it. You make it hard to say goodbye. I die a little every time. Find it impossible to leave you with that look in your eyes. So oh, you make it hard to say goodbye. Little tiny Aphrodite, I don't wanna wake you up. When you smile in your sleep, I wonder what you're dreaming of. You got that temporary cherry blossom potion on your lips. I wanna swallow up your ocean, but I only got a sip and that's an Uber on the way because my flight is in an hour. I still gotta pack a bag and brush my teeth and take a shower. So I take a mental picture because I know I'm gonna be oopsies. Okay, so this is not the best plan. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I've just created like a net one that's more dense, one that's less dense, and then that's going to replace my opacity. <laughs> Got a better way, which I'm sure you do. Please let me know below so that I don't waste my time next time. The other thing that I don't know is I don't know how big this is going to be. Like, will it be this big? Will it be this big? It's like this big. We'll see. I don't want to, but I have to. I already feel so lonely. I don't want to, but I have so to. I've cut these pieces and these are going to hold the feet on. So they're going to be like this. The pole is going to go through, uh, through this piece. I'm going to cut some shape in it so it kind of has a better design. So I spent the last four hours cutting these sections that hold the legs on. And I thought they looked really cool. Like, I, I liked it. But then I've just shown Sean and she... Here's the thing. In your drawings it was just lines. So you're like, here's the shells. I didn't see any of these. Do you prefer that? I think I do, but... It's less strong. I'm not here for strength. I'm here for aesthetic. Sean, you don't want a table just what to fall to over. Oh, I hit it against the table. You don't think that'll look weird? Like, imagine basically from the outside it looks like this. I don't mind it. You like that? I don't know. I've yeah. never seen you like any furniture that looks like this. That looks sick. No, if you were in a store, you would be like, Oh, I think ugly. it looks great. Look. I think it looks stupid. Like, who knows? Maybe it'd be one of those things that's like, when it's done, it's like, Oh man, that's awesome, Rocky. Yeah. That's what it's going to be like. I just know it. Oh, you make it hard to say goodbye. Model Dalai Lama, you're the lover from above. You're that lightning in a bottle. I can't ever get enough. It's like my hand is on the throttle, but my heart is on the clutch. Wishing I could be two places at once. So if I leave my heart beside the bed, would you promise? Okay, so I put together my manuscript and a few rough visuals just to give my publishers an idea of the story. I don't know how I probably have to blow this out, so I'm sorry, this is like a nothing to screen. Maybe I can show you this. But I'm excited. I really am excited. It's always exciting to come up with new ideas and hear from your publisher on what, like, they think of it and if they want to buy it. Obviously. Forget me, don't forget me, don't forget Welcome to Sean's cooking channel. Okay, I'm really bad at baking. This could go either way. But Nate's birthday is tonight. I know he's been looking at those Korean cakes, like Betty cake and stuff. So we're gonna try and do that, but I have to say I am scared. You don't sound too excited about because it. Because I'm Sean. scared. If it was just me baking, I'd be like, yay! But I feel like everything is gonna go wrong. If I had a baking show, it would be the worst show ever. It would be like, help me! What am I doing now? Oh, should we put more vanilla? It's probably gonna be eggshell. Uh, this mixer is not gonna be big enough because we're making two batches of cake. We should have made one at a time. What was I bloody thinking? Oh god, it's not gonna fit. Really, not gonna fit. 
I love vaping, but when I actually have to do it for something, it makes me scared because I only succeed half of the time. And no, I don't want you to let me know what I'm doing wrong. I like to continue to think that it's 50-50 chance of baking and everyone has this problem. <laughs> the stress of it all. How fast can I beat this without exploding on me? Why did it stop? <laughs> Why do you need to push it? Just go slowly and take it easy. Sean, you're the best baker I've ever it's, seen. It's all clumpy, baby. Yeah, don't worry about it. Should I warm the milk? No, nah, don't worry about it. Mm, should I warm it up now? <laughs> Definitely not. Surely that's enough. I'm getting bored of this. Let's see how much can fit in. Should we try and stir that in first? Yeah. It's called being technical. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> And then I'm going to separate half and make one cake green and one cake pink because I'm pretty sure Nate loves that colour combination which is weird because I do not like it. Even the way I handle the machine so amateur. It's like I'm turning <laughs> it on like this. La la la. It fits, that's cool. I can make two cakes every time. It's all clumpy, that's not supposed to be like that surely. Oh, this looks awful. Do you not think it looks terrible? Look what at the clumps. What are those clumps? Probably butter. Oh well, it'll melt in the oven. How much of this do you put in and will it affect the baking? Why don't you just do bit by bit? Oh, no. Ew! Ooh, it's nice like toothpaste. Well, um, <gasps> not that much more. That's a bit too much. It's gonna be black. It's gonna be a dark brew. Now this I can get behind. Oh, this yeah, is fun. Nice. Does it darken in the oven? Someone tell us below. More pink, hey? Yeah, just a pinch. It's gonna be, br I swear it will come out brown. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's fine. Are you sure? Look at that, it didn't make one speck of difference. I'm gonna put more in. Well then add a little bit more. I'm gonna but... add a lot. Oh, okay. It'll be fine. If anything, it'll be great. It's not even mixed properly. <laughs> so little. It's, it's so little better. <laughs> it's all about the icing, Sean. Yeah, but if it's not tall, there won't be any space for the icing, baby. It's gonna be the saddest cake in the world. Hard, you make it hard to say goodbye. Okay, so this looks weird, but he has a brand called Fluff, which is a fairy floss company, and he has like a food Instagram. So we got him some stuff that he could use in content because I, I know he wanted milkshakey glasses and then I thought these ice cream things might be fun and then I wanted to find him pink stuff but we couldn't find him that much pink stuff. But like vintage and secondhand stuff because I wanted to find like a bunch of different things that he could use in content and then we got him this more expensive plate that's already been wrapped. So now I just need to wrap the business books because I know he wanted business books. It's really hard to find someone else business books. I was in the business section for so long. I wanted like a small one so he could just like tackle it quickly and then this one which I read was good. I don't know about business books, so uh, if Nate, if you're watching this, just pretend you like it. Also, we got in this card that says, you're maturing nicely, and it's just like a colour. I thought I was going to be able to find more pink stuff, but we couldn't find as much, so at least it goes with this, I guess. Happens every summer Things are moving slow and time to unwind only gives me time to spend alone And I can't help but wonder If anyone's in town Scrolling through the phone on a Sunday Just hanging around with nothing to do Summer loving Under moonlight, a flower in her hair, and didn't think she'd know. Jeez. Come around here, my lassie. But I want gridded paper, but not my archival. How much was your archival paper? It was. I did not say that right. I don't remember. But I you don't want to say on camera, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I don't actually know. 
All right, keep it to yourself, man. <laughs> I can't remember who was standing around. Just, just, just drop it. Wait, how much? I don't, I don't know. No, I'm going to have to rewind this. Is this just fit in here? No. He's going to love that we've done typewriter. He hates when, I, when I'm like, should we do it on the typewriter? But you know what, Nathan? I'm allowed to do whatever I want with a present. She called my stare. And I can't help but wonder what she's thinking now. Is she standing alone, going home, or just hanging around with nothing to do? Summer, loving, give me something. Every single summer time all the seasons in between <laughs> It's like those cakes that the fails <laughs> 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 you didn't go with confidence. Oh, that takes a few. Nathan? Yeah? Thoughts? <laughs> Could have been better. Do you know how long this took her? Do you feel like. <laughs> no, it's great. It, looked, it reminds me of Harry Potter, the icing. Mm. I love it. Yay, thank God. But for the record, I don't love the pink and green combo. That's I thought I, you liked it. That's like one of the things I hate. It looks <laughs> excellent. It looks fantastic. And it's enormous. It's I like. Know. So big. Look at my hand for scale. Am I going to draw this? <laughs> <laughs> but I know she called my stare And I can't help but wonder What she's thinking now Is she standing alone going home Or just hanging around with nothing to do Summer loving Give me something I hope you guys like this video. I know it's long, but I still want to do a Q&A because I like doing Q&As. So I'm going to answer a few questions, not too many. Um, and I'm just going to pull from like the last time I asked because there was like 100 over questions and I did, definitely didn't get to all of them. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring my video. As usual, you guys know I love Squarespace. What else can I say about Squarespace? Hmm. Oh, I know. Rocket was thinking of starting a brand and he actually did shop around. And my when I tell you that I've looked at other like website building platforms, this is when I this is probably like four years ago. And sometimes I'm like,
like, I hope I'm still being truthful about it being the best. But Rocket recently had a look around to see what would work best for him and he still went with Squarespace. So proof is in the pudding. This family is a Squarespace family. <laughs> I think what it is is that Squarespace does like an, a well-rounded website best. It's really easy to use. It's gorgeous. You've got analytics. You've got like all the types of websites that you could want. You've got blog functionality. You've got shop functionality. You've got portfolio functionality. Also, you've got like um, events. But like this is not something that I use. But I know that there's like you can book events and stuff like that, I think. Pretty much anything that you would want a website for, Squarespace can do it. So if you guys want to try it out, if you haven't already. I mean, it's been like two or three years that I've been like talking about Squarespace. If you still haven't tried it. I definitely recommend it. Please check them out. Go to squarespace.com slash fairy little peach. You get a free trial and a 10% discount on your first purchase. Okay, let's get into the question. Hi, I'm an aspiring artist. And though my mom is, <laughs> though my mom, mo mom is, sorry, I can't say that when it's written like that. Though my mom is very supportive. She says that you can't live from doing art. May I ask how you manage in brackets? I always use you as an example of an artist who isn't homeless. Love everything you do and make. Greetings from Belgium. Um, your mom's definitely not right. Sorry, mom. But you definitely can make money from doing art. I think it's a really, really broad term. I think of art as like fine art, illustration, design, stuff like that. Like I see it as like the creative industry and you can definitely make money from doing that. I wouldn't jump straight into freelance. It's never my advice to be doing that. I would try and find like an internship or a job and try and get some experience in business and experience in how to work with other people, blah, blah, blah. I've said this before, but I guess um, what your mum is thinking of is possibly like the kind of person that is making work for themselves, sharing it sometimes and just hoping it sticks rather than actively going out and seeking commercial work, creating work that is marketable to clients and making yourself like an attractive service for other people. It's just like any other business. You need to fill a need essentially. And you need to, if you're looking to do it just for yourself, there are so many avenues that you can do it. You can do YouTube. Like you don't need clients if you're doing YouTube. And if you're able to build an audience, you can get sponsored. And that's how you can, that's another way you can make money. You can be like an influencer and do lots of sponsored content. Um, that is another way that you can fund doing your art. You can open like an online store and sell your work there. There are so many ways that you can make money from doing what you love. And I think that's the best part about being alive in like the internet age. But I think the people that do most well are the people that do all of those things at once. So having multiple streams of income so that if one of them drops off or if something happens, you're safe and you are not in your mom's words, homeless or in your words, homeless. When you're able and when it is safe, where are you hoping to travel next in brackets, vacation or work? Rock and I have been dreaming of going back to Europe because we went there when we were 21 and we have a lot of amazing memories there. His grandpa used to live there and now his mom has that house in um, just like, where is it in France? South of France, is it, baby? Yeah, South France, near Lyon. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, and we just have like a lot of nice memories from there. So I would like to go back and like see it as an adult and seeing it as like someone that's earning more money now so I can afford to, you know, like see more things, I guess. Other than that, I would like to explore more of Australia actually because I realize now that I haven't. So I'm, I'm okay if international holidays and stuff aren't straight away, although I am dreaming of going back to Europe, but I would like to explore more of Australia. We're actually going to an apple orchard this weekend. So I'm excited. Instagram seems like a second language to me. I was wondering how do you manage your social media content? Are you more spontaneous and take pictures with your phone or do you have an entire organization system behind it? Thank you. Oh, sad face. Thank you. Uh, I'm not good. <laughs> um, I thought at first I thought this person was saying like it's like a second language to them as in like they're so good at Instagram. I was like, ooh, it's some hot tips for me. I'm pretty spontaneous, like an intuitive with it. Even when I was posting every day, it was photographing and then posting it. I've never really been the kind of person to like, have like weeks planned ahead or anything. I'm just too sh I'm not organized enough in that respect. I'm more of like a take it on my phone, edit it on my phone, post it from my phone. I try not to take it with a camera and I definitely try not to take it from a phone onto a computer. I wanna be spending my time creating the work that I'm photographing rather than spending all of my time like setting something up to photograph, you know? That's not to say that it's not set up sometimes. It's just that I don't spend a lot of time doing that. But I probably should assign more time to personal work and assign more time to creating content from that personal work. But alas, here we are. How do you respond to people who ask for low prices of our designs and even ask us for free designs? Well, luckily, like uh, I have like 
Chris, who's like my producer, so he sees all of the emails first. He'll usually weed out ones that are not worth our time. Does that mean I don't do cheap or free work? No, I do like to work with small businesses and not-for-profits when projects are interesting and when I can. If someone wants to work with me for an unreasonably no, low budget, straight up, I'll just be like, nah. I don't want to like play games. I don't want to waste time. So usually, like this happened recently. I was just like, I don't know what, the, what I said last. Let me find it because it might be interesting to, to know. Let me see. Ah, okay. They said, hi, Sean. Hope you're doing well. All things considering blah, 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 blah. They gave me like the time, the the length of the work and like what it was and how much the fee was. First, I forwarded it to Chris to see, see what he thought. He said, seems low, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I always do that just in case I'm being crazy, you know? Um, and then I said, hi, blah. Thank you so much for reaching out. Can't wait to see the series. Unfortunately, my rates are a lot higher than the budget, so I won't be taking this on. I know you'll find someone awesome though. And I think like, because it was so low, I wasn't interested in it at all. I knew they wouldn't be able to bring the budget up to what I wanted. So I was just being respectful, um, semi-educating them in the way that it's like my fees are a lot higher and thanking them for thinking of me. Because I think just because this person can't offer you something, they're not trying to lowball you necessarily. Usually it's someone that is working for someone else that is given a budget. They're not usually the ones being like, hey, let's give them nothing. You can also educate them on your fees. You can give them like a rate card or a rough ballpark so that perhaps they can raise it to that price, especially if it's closer to what, you're, what you would usually ask for. Um, if they're asking for free work, I don't re really get those... I, I haven't really experienced a lot of those lately just because Chris is usually, he usually weeds those out. But maybe just educate them. I mean, I've seen people do that. I don't know how I would do it in a way that isn't like too blunt or offensive. Sometimes people just don't understand how much work goes into creative work. So it can be like a really nice opportunity to educate them about that. Just try to always be nice because you never know who that person is like who that person is, where they're planning on going, whether they have good intentions or not. They could end up being someone that can give you work later. So I would recommend not burning bridges if you can. <laughs> One, do you only take sponsorships from Squarespace? Why? <laughs> Two, what goals or plans of yours have you not achieved or wanted to achieve? We get a lot of requests for sponsorships on YouTube, but usually A, it's someone I don't want to work with. B, maybe they don't have the budget for it. See maybe what they're offering is not something I'm interested in advertising because that's essentially what it is. And D, sometimes I just feel like I don't have like the bandwidth to do another sponsored video because I, I feel a lot of stress when it comes to sponsored videos, which is basically all of my videos at the moment. Like, first of all, I want it to be interesting for you guys. I want it to do well in terms of like engagement for the company that I'm working with. And I would never accept jobs where I feel like I'm lying because I just, I just can't. And it just works really well when I already love the company. I always want people to leave my videos feeling like, like full, if you know what I mean. Like feeling good, not feeling like sick or feeling like starving or something. I don't know what that analogy is. Anyway, the second question, what goals or plans of yours have you not achieved or wanted to achieve? Something that's been on my list for a long time is doing ceramics. Like it's just always put on the back burner because it really isn't a priority. If I don't do it soon, I'll just do it when I'm old. That's fine. What advice would you give to someone who's studying graphic design but wants to become an illustrator? Okay, I like this question. Graphic design is an excellent industry to be in because it's such a great one to pivot from if you want to do something else. It gives you like a lot of great skills because you you understand how to use all of the programs um, in a way that you may not if you were just coming from illustration. I really appreciate my experience as a designer. So I guess my advice would be when you're finished your design degree or course or whatever you're doing would be to get a design job, a, a job that you can get based on your portfolio that you've created while you've been uni um, so that you can live and then do illustration on the side so that you can develop your style and slowly start taking on clients and not be like completely reliant on something that you have less experience in. I think it's like a way more positive introduction into the industry and also you're, you're able to still be fine-tuning your design skills because when you finish uni you're not like suddenly equipped with all the skills like I knew so I learned more in my internship after university than I learned in my entire degree I would say. I would uh, continue on with graphic design because it's super easy to pivot from there and you can do personal work outside of school, uh, outside of your job and then move into illustration so for me I was working as a digital designer doing uh, designing apps and websites for like a little boutique agency here in Sydney and then I was still doing freelance work ever since like I was at the end of high school or like just after high school but I had continued that slowly without a lot of pressure and eventually I was getting enough freelance illustration work 
and I wanted to leave my my job as a designer at the same time so it was like really really nice and less scary way to enter the industry and I wasn't like completely drowning and worried about eating and like living because I had a, a job it doesn't sound sexy that's the t sis okay that's it i hope that was interesting um i hope you guys like this video i actually really like editing it. i thought the music was really good i like doing these q a's after i've edited it so i can like reflect when we do these q a's i want you guys to answer the questions yourselves as well because i like the idea as i've said before of like my comment section being like a forum i really want to see what you have to say because i'm just like one person in the creative industry i don't have all the answers and also maybe there are more than one answer depending on experience so it would be nice to hear from you guys goodbye people i hope you like this video i hope you like the shelves that rocket built me i will see you very soon goodbye Oh, it's stale. If you guys would like me to do an ASMR studio vlog, you let me know because I know that that's what you really truly want and I can do that for you. <coughs> they won't be drinking in the, in the studio vlog. Unless you request it. Oh. Here's a little taste test. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this pencil sucks.